Uh, zero chance on both of those guys tomorrow. But I don't know about Houston yet. So tomorrow for sure, excuse me, both are out. Benny, you look a lot at the last game and take things from that last game, or you try not to. How do you, how do you approach the game planning for UCF this second go round? Yeah, you take some things that they did against us, um, and then some things you just got to you know, throw away because they didn't have their starting point guard. And uh, they're playing such different now. They've added things since our last game. So have we. But we see enough from those guys to know exactly what to do in tomorrow's game. How much was, I don't know if you used it as bulletin board material, but, you know, C.J. Kelly, and, uh, I don't know if it was Chandler or so much, but C.J. definitely was, you know, talking smack uh, in the post-game presser after they beat y'all uh, last time. Is that something that you try to talk to the guys about, like try to rile them up with that or not, not really? <laughs> not really. Uh, it's just enough to be able to have the next game. You know, some guys get excited after a win. I mean, he's trying to pump his team up, you know, and uh, he had a good game against us. So that was, that was a great day for him that day. So this team last time, they hit 16 threes. Obviously, it went to overtime, but they go overtime. How do you keep them um, not as consistent as going to the second game? Yeah, that's, that's the key for those guys because they're really, you know, an efficient team offensively by shooting threes. Uh, we put some things in that uh, we know we have to be better Things that we know we have to be better with, and we put some things in to just hopefully help us, um, you know, get be better than we were in the game last time, covering the three-point line. Also, with Keontae and uh, Elijah, obviously they've taken off the last couple of weeks. What have you seen in their confidence just as they continue to grow and get in the system? Well, I think it's just comfort. You know, they unfortunately with the injuries to our team. You know, Alo being out and Malcolm being out, it hurts for sure because we lost our, our rotation. But for Keontae and Elijah, it, it gave them opportunities, more opportunities than they were getting before. And they both seized the moment, and they both are taking advantage of their opportunities. Elijah told us a few minutes ago that he's never played that baseline in the paint position, even in high school, didn't even play that. What did you see that made you say, as the injuries were kind of happening for the team, that made you say, Elijah's the guy to fill that role? Well, because he's willing to do, Elijah's willing to do whatever we need him to do to win the game. And with his athleticism and his strength, he could play anywhere on the floor, one through five. So for us, we're using him in all areas and just thankful that he just has a, a, a heart that just wants to, that wants to win and wants to do well for the, uh, for the school and for the team. And when you have a vision for the season starts, and your program is kind of set on the principle of, you know, of defense first and offense second, if that's fair to say. Um, and now your offense is looking like perhaps one of the best in the country, but the mm -hmm. defense is kind of falling off. At, at what point do you adjust that game plan, and, and what's that process like? Well, we're, we're always on a mission to be defensive-minded first. Now, obviously, I'm blessed with where the offense is because this is the best my offense has ever looked since I've been the coach. Uh, we have some, you know, some guys that understand how to score, and Kendrick and, and, and DeAndre, they're scoring at a high level. And then you got guys on the team that just know how to take advantage of opportunities like Keontae, Jaden, uh, Eli, even Jonathan Lawson and Chandler on certain days. And you just, you know, that mix has been good. But I'll never turn strictly to just being an offensive-minded team and then defense second because you win your championships with defense. And defense travels because on the nights that you miss shots, you got to get stops. So we've struggled more this year, but we're still working on it. And it's almost like we're in constant training camp on the defensive side of the ball uh, weekly. Yeah, shrinking the court, you know, not being so far spread apart. Just kind of us kind of protecting our paint. Uh, also, um, you know, the way that we close out. Once we shrink the court, they're going to throw it out for threes. You got to be able to con control that three-point shot and then not give up a drive. We call those threats. So as, ma as many threats as we can take away, then, you know, you know that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, I, I see Elijah. I saw his gift from the first week that he was here. You know, he's just kind of a laid-back, willing-to-sacrifice type of guy. If he had a, 
like a, a selfish mentality, you know, he'd be trying to go out there and get 14 or 15 points. But because he's such a well-rounded player, the 12 to 14 points come to him off just offense, so many multiple ways, so many different ways. Offensive rebounding, uh, threes, running the fast break, uh, you know, post-ups. He just scores in multiple ways, and he's comfortable with that. He's not trying to go out there and force anything. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much playing time either would get if they come back, but you welcome a veteran that's played against the team before because you're thinking more defensive-minded. You know, you're thinking, like, these are guys that know the system and can sure up some stuff defensively. Penny, it's, it's been few and far between when, when KD has a bad first half, but he's had a couple. He had one on Sunday. And I watch him, and it seems like he's got some bad body lines. He gets down on himself. And I always expect he's going to be huge in the second half, and he always is. Is there something that you say to him, because you probably noticed that too, or that something he does at halftime to adjust because his focus is completely different in the second half? Yeah, I'm more hands-off at the beginning of the game because I try to allow him to get a rhythm. You know, I don't try to really nitpick every little thing that he does because I need our guards to have flow. And after a while, I'll start talking to him, and then at halftime, I'll make the adjustment with him. And then he'll come out, relax, and then get it done. He just puts too much pressure on his game to try to win the game. And that's just something that he's always had built inside of him before he even got here. And we're trying to help harness that some because he's so hard on himself when he's not playing well that you can't lose sight of the team. And that's mostly what I'm saying to him. You cannot lose sight of the team. Get locked back in on doing what you need to do. Your game, your work is going to show. Yeah, they're both different as far as how they handle their, their uh, adversities. You know, DeAndre's quiet, but he's still going to keep playing. Kendrick can get shut down. So I handle both of those guys differently. So I'll go to Kendrick and talk more about team, and I'll just build DeAndre up like, all right, this, you got a little, you know, you're getting a little lax right now, or you need to do this, and all he says is, yes, sir. And I'm like, what do you need? We'll communicate, and then he'll get it done. So both ways. You know that I handle both guys' his work. Thank God. He just needs the the reassurance of his work. You know, he's put so much work in that he expects every ball to go in. He expects every pass to be on point because he's worked tirelessly three times a day in the summertime to get that work done. And then when it doesn't show on the court, it disappoints him because he's like, "Why is this not happening well for me?" And I'm just glad that I could be there for him to kind of get him locked back in. Yeah, tomorrow, you know, it's not hard to get prepared for because this team has already beaten us. And they're, they're one of the top teams in the conference. They did go through a little lull. I think they lost five in a row, four in a five, or four in a row, or five in a row. So it won't be hard to get up for that game. We're not even worried about Houston now. We're a 1-0 and team. So we got to win tomorrow before Houston even comes into play. So I don't think anybody's overlooking UCF because they're good enough uh, to make you keep your mindset on them. You, Yeah, obviously my first one because it was a shocker uh, to be able to go to All-Star Weekend. is something that I dreamed about, something that I, I didn't play to get to All-Star Weekend. I played to try to win a championship. But when the uh, accolades started to happen, to go to my first one, it was in Cleveland. Um, no, my first one was not in Cleveland. It was in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And it was just a beautiful thing just to be there with all the All-Stars, knowing that you're elite and knowing that you're a part of something that a lot of people have not accomplished. My rookie game was in, uh, I think it was in Minnesota. I remember that, yeah, the rookie All-Star game. So, yeah, it was just all those memories are just good feeling. So for Ja and especially Jaron, you know, this is Ja's second time around. Jaron is just an amazing accomplishment. You want that, and when you finally get it, you know, it's beautiful. You mentioned uh, before the two-lane game, you were talking about Ron Hunter's offense and about it's more of kind of a read and react type of offense. I wanted to ask you, like, your offense this year – particularly with so much success. Is it a read and react, or is it, do you call a lot of the plays percentage-wise? Like, and does that change throughout the game? Um, it's, a, it's a little bit of both. Most, most 80, 
80% is going to be read and react. And then 20%, percent i got to get some absolutes. Like, I'm going to go, OK, this is exactly what we're doing. Because on the read and react, if you run it properly, it's very hard to guard. And uh, on the plays that we want, the, the, the absolute plays, is we know the ball is going to a specific guy. And this is what we're going to do, mostly on those post-ups. Is that a departure from the previous years? Do you, is, are you kind of along the same lines in terms of the 80-20 read and react and absolute plays? Like Yeah, for sure. I've always been heavy on the allowing the guys to play out of concepts and kind of read and react. And then when we that's not working and we're not cutting hard enough or it's not flowing, then I'll go to something that I know that we're going to get a good shot.